Um, my background is in architecture. When I look through the world, I constantly see shapes, line, shadow, 3D. And so I really wanted to put that into fashion. My girl, she was powerful. When she walked into a room, she grabbed attention. She's this young professional girl. You know, part of this challenge was to give you guys fabric, but also how does that fabric help communicate your aesthetic? Okay. And I think in this case, it really did. When you explain that you're dressing this working woman and you want her to look powerful, and you have this strong aesthetic of architecture, I can see all of those things in your design. I think this is really good. Wow. Thanks. Hi, Nina. Hi, Donna. I like your sandals. I'm Thank having you. envy. <laughs> Um, well, you know, uh, when I knew I was talking to you, I was like, Oscar de la Renta, Marnie, gotta bring it, like, gotta great. pull it out, you know? <laughs> you um, look great. Well, thank you. So do you. What are you wearing? I am wearing Altazura and Gianvito Rossi. I do love Altazura. I do it's love like, it, too. Yeah. He, he does cut for your body type versus mine. Though, oh, I please. That. <laughs> That's not true. Um, so first, I wanted to ask you... Um, I have a four-year-old. Hello, everyone. And hello, everybody at home, too. Before we talk about the business of fashion, um, uh, I have a four-year-old who is very fortunately uh, not, he has no food issues, no food allergies. And your son is not in, so lucky. So how did, how did you learn about uh, was it just the hard way that he ate something and he broke out knives? Um, we had, you know, uh, when we had our son, the pediatrician mm -hmm. actually tested them very early on. He must have been about two or two and a half. Um, and he came up very, very high for nuts and, mm -hmm. and tree nuts, allergy, very high numbers. So we were always very careful. We were always, you know, we really observed the action plan, which is be, you know, be very attentive to any of the triggers for his peanuts. But life happens yeah. and what is so scary about allergies is that it could be so unexpected and it could be just a little accident and on a beautiful day to the beach like a beautiful summer day we were driving and a friend unbeknownst to us gave him a little kale chip and immediately we recognized the signs of anaphylaxis he got very red he threw up he felt like his throat was closing. He must have been six years old. Um, we recognized the symptoms. And as had been recommended by our doctor, we had two EpiPens with us that we were prepared to use immediately. And we took him to the emergency room. But it was a very scary um, situation. And that's why I am so really um, happy. And, and I feel so responsible to really share this story with everybody that has a son, as a mother, to share it with other mothers that might have um, a child with a severe allergy, to raise awareness, to educate everybody of the importance of recognizing um, the symptoms, of staying, you know, being very proactive about keeping the allergic triggers away from your son, and always, always having two epinephrine auto-injectors with you at all times, like EpiPen. Like at school or play dates? Or everywhere you, you go. On holidays, on play dates, at school, everywhere you go, you should be. Even if it's not your child, if you are having a severe, if you are having a severe allergy, you're prone to severe allergies, always be prepared. Wow. That's... You know, very intense. Yes, it's very intense. <laughs> but it's very important. I think it's very important. I think the incidence of allergies have really mm -hmm. skyrocketed, and especially severe allergies. And I don't know if, you know, most people know that they can be lethal. And it's, again, it's yeah. something that is, could be just a little accident. And, and if you do or you are suffering from severe allergy, your doctor will be able to tell you, um, you know, what the procedure is. But having to auto-injectors with you at all times and really avoiding all of your allergic triggers is key to staying healthy and staying on top of it. Is your son able to, you know, have cupcakes or anything when they have that at school or no? Most of the schools are not free. Okay. So he is able to have some cupcakes. I mean, obviously we're very, um, we are very, we, we watch what 
ingredients are in our food. We read every label. We prepare our food. And he is very conscious mm -hmm. of doing that. We have been very proactive in teaching him in a very a nice way of educating him to take control of how what his diet is and what goes into his food. And it's been healthy for the entire family. Yeah. It's been actually been really good for all of us to stay on top of what goes into our food and how, what ingredients are to read the ingredients. So we are very, you know, he's very aware of that and he's very good at it. But again, being his mother, I need to be vigilant, vigilant yeah. and be prepared for him. Yeah, I, uh, I was, you know, because my kid was fi is fine. I was very dismissive of it and then he had, Play date with uh, anyway with I was somebody. Like, well, yeah, there must and I was be like, kids I, in in your son's class. Well, his class this last year was there was no food allergies, so they wow. were like peanut butter, fine, whatever, you know. But uh, there was one kid from a different school who, I mean, the the poor child was like, he came over to our house and the only thing he could have for dinner was, was a ham roll. Oh no! Because like literally a slice of ham rolled up to make it look fancier because everything we had was like peanuts and tree nuts and whatever and I was like I'm so sorry that like well, they, they're all eating like oh, this amazing well it doesn't pasta have to be it doesn't have ham. to be so terrible you know? I, I think there's plenty of food but I do think it's you know some kids yes unfortunately have it yeah. and some kids don't but it's perfectly fine to live with it and it's you know part of this campaign the EpiPen on location campaign is especially for you know mothers mm -hmm. that have kids that have severe allergies like our son but i always recommend you know speak to your pediatrician speak to your doctor um, get the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. If they are, speak to them about what is the right medication. If they're taking any other medication that might interact with epinephrine or EpiPen, it, what are the side effects? What are you know the safety information? How to ap apply, administer the EpiPen mm -hmm. if you need to. It's it's just very. There's a lot of detail that goes into it, but again, it's to be educated. It's to have a plan of action. Um, and that's one, you know, that's very important. Follow the, the steps. Well, and now on a lighter note, Fashion Week is almost upon us. Ah, um, what are your rules for surviving it? Uh, oh, my God. My rules for surviving it is to get as much sleep as possible before I can't. Um, hydrate, have a lot of water. Um, a lot of, and keep an extra pair of shoes in the car just in case, because I'm going to be exhausted. And do you, I guess, you're on Project One Runway this season, and you're at Marie Claire. What is, what are some common mistakes that designers make when they try to launch a collection? Um, I see that very often. I think that designers get, you know, we all love the, in, the people that are in the industry. Mm -hmm. We love to watch other designers. And I think a common mistake is for them not to really develop their own identity. So they're trying to emulate somebody else mm -hmm. or they try to, or they're, you know, inspired by another collection. So they lose their essence or what they really are about. And I see that happen all the time, especially with people that are beginning in the business. They haven't developed their own language or they haven't developed their own aesthetic. So they're trying to be influenced mm -hmm. by somebody else's aesthetic when it re it's really about having your own point of view. Yeah, you look at someone like Alex Wang, and he's so precise. Like he's, of course. I mean, you know exactly what he stands for, and when you buy something of his, what it represents. Right, and you should be able to look mm -hmm. at that garment and be like, I know that is mm -hmm. a Zach Posen, or I know that Alexander Wang. But even you know, like your Altazara dress, like it's, he has that very specific silhouette that he always cuts. Yeah, which and there's you know there's. There's codes, right? Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about the designers having certain codes. When you, as they mature, they develop things that they're good at. Mm -hmm. It's be in their tailoring or be in the feminine details mm -hmm. or be in their fabrics, but that becomes part of their code and almost becomes part of their language, and that's how you identify them. How important is the celebrity element to designers today? I mean, can you make it without having celebrities wear your clothes? I think you can. You can, but it, really? I, I think you can. But I do think that, you know, it's part of our, mm -hmm. it's part of our culture. Let's 
let's be realistic. It is part of our culture, but there are a lot of designers that I think still make it without having the, the component. I would hate to say that that's not the case. I do think that there's plenty of designers that are very talented that don't have a real celebrity endorsement or have a celebrity following and still are very much uh, coveted. Is there any designer that surprised you by becoming a huge breakout, not necessarily because the clothes were bad or good, but just that you kind of never saw coming? Oh, God. Um, I get surprised every season, to be honest with you. It's always a surprise, and that's what's so wonderful about fashion, that every season there's some, a brand or a designer that comes along, and you're like, oh, my God, this is, they're so talented, or I want that. Um, it's part of what keeps this industry exciting. Yeah, I think my current obsession is Creatures of the Wind. I think their stuff is so cool. Fantastic. And, and the good news is that so much talent is mm -hmm. coming out of New York. Mm -hmm. There's so much talent coming out of New York City. It's really our time. On Project Runway, how do you keep your feedback in check? I mean, do you ever feel like you just want to throw a rock at someone and <laughs> be like, shoot at them and be like, something's <laughs> good, please go become like, a plumber, like this is not for you. Like it's never gonna happen. Um, no, I, I don't want to completely um, take them, that's their dream. If they are in Project Runways, because that is their dream. Yeah, but I mean, I could have a dream to be like, you know, one of Taylor Swift's backup dancers. That's still never going to happen. Um, but, you, but you know, the fashion industry is a big industry. You can have many voices. You know, I initially started off thinking, I want to be a designer. Mm -hmm. Yet there's so many other things that you can do in fashion. So I don't want to completely obliterate them and be like, no, you can't. But, I, you know, I do, I am very frank. I am, I do like to really measure them on par with what is happening mm -hmm. in the industry. Um, and I want that experience to be a learning experience, to be, you know, because if I am tough, the industry is really a lot yeah. tougher than I am. So I don't cut them any breaks, that's for sure. Um, but I do want it to be a learning experience. If you could pick one designer to wear for the rest of your life and only that designer, who would it be? That's a very hard question, but I think I would say maybe Pasadena Laya. Maybe it would keep me in check. <laughs> and I would perpetually have to be very healthy. <laughs> That's a good choice. Yes. And he's like Switzerland, you know, you can't. He's not owned by any big conglomerate. Yes. And his stuff is just impeccable. And his stuff so. is timeless. You know, I think his designs are really timeless. It's one of those things that it doesn't have a season. Mm -hmm. And who do you... If there was one celebrity that you think really kind of embodies what it means to be a modern, stylish woman, who is it? Oh my God. All of them nowadays are really going for it. Um, God, one celebrity. You know, I, I know that this is a, an answer that has been probably heard many times, but I do think there's something about Kate Moss and the fact that she has such effortlessness mm -hmm in the way she dresses that really seems to struck a, a chord with me in terms of modernity. It's like almost she's not trying too hard. It's, uh, there's, I really admire that and I think that's very 21st century, that sense of effortlessness that you don't really have to be uh, made up from head to toe mm -hmm. and, or, or wearing designer head to toe. There's that mix of high and low and there's that effortlessness in her beauty that I think that really hits a chord. I met her at a party a few years ago, and she's just a spectacular in person. Yeah, oh my God. She is very I mean, beautiful. Like, wow. But you, I th know? you know, that's why I think she's still so relevant mm -hmm. today, is because it's, it's that way she carries herself and the way she puts herself together seems very relevant. What was the first um, item that you bought that you really and truly splurged on, that you really were like, money is no object, I don't care if this isn't on sale, I'm getting it? Oh, oh, God. I think it was a, believe it or not, a Chanel jacket at Barney's when Barney's was on 17th Street. And I, I really wanted, I didn't want the bag. I wanted that black jacket. I thought, you know, I was starting my career. I thought that that was going to be 
the secret to my success. <laughs> um, yeah, I really wanted that little black jacket. It just, I think I spent all of my savings and <laughs> all of like everything that I had saved, all of the birthdays, communion, everything on that little jacket. But I still have it today. Do you really? I do. See, there That's you go. This is one thing about Chanel that you should know and everybody should know. Um, the way that it's made, it's made so beautifully mm -hmm. that you can really alter it and let it out or bring it in, and and it it works. You know, even I have grown, I have changed sizes, I've been pregnant. God, only many things have happened, and I I still have that, and it looks perfect. And another thing, and about it's Chanel's, timeless, and the the prices go up twenty five percent every year, right? Yeah, so invest. So yeah. <laughs> So it's basically, you got it for free if you, like, do the yes, reverse math. all these years, Like, right? non-editorial math, you know? <laughs> That's how I used to always justify it to my husband. Like, it's, it's on sale, so technically, it's great. Yeah. giving it to me, you know? <laughs> um, do you instantly know on Project Runway when someone has, like, the, the ability to go the distance? Yes, but I've been surprised. There's always like a dark horse that comes from left field that kind of surprises me, and I'm like, well, what happened? How did you know? Because the the way it is, you know, there's somebody that maybe did not have the personality or hasn't been on the on the ins and has been on the just the normal that always kind of seeps by and suddenly surprises us. And you know, honestly. Christian Siriano, yes, he was one of, he was very good at the beginning, but we didn't really see him coming until like halfway yeah. through the season when we were like, wait, this guy has not won, but has not been on the outs, and he's really, really good. And if you could go on a bar crawl with any designer, who would it be? <laughs> Michael Kors, all the time, hands down. Are you kidding? There's nobody that's so much fun as Michael Kors, trust me. Hands so down. He really is like that. Oh, my God. He's just fantastic. The best, best personality. <laughs> I don't even have to think about it. Absolute bar crawl, any, Afghanistan, any kind of wherever crawl. you want to put me with him, I'll go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And how big is your closet at home? It's big, but I think people would be disappointed. It's not Versailles. But <laughs> Spoken let an editor. Oh, God. Uh, it's big. It's Do you big. call things every year? Um, yes, that's what editors do. <laughs> Absolutely. God, how do you know what to get rid of? Um, oh, you do know. You do know. You know what? If it doesn't fit after a few seasons, it's out. If after but you could lose the weight at some I point. I know that. And it, will, it may fit. I have some of those. I have some of those still lurking, like when I get really, really, really thin. Um, but you have to. You have to because you know what? This, this industry is really about the new. So you've got to leave room for the new. So what do you do? Just a, consign it? I'll give it to somebody, you know, somebody that wants mm -hmm. it or I'll consign it or I'll give it away. Oh, I'm just I'll find a home for it. My uh, one of my girlfriends is like, we need to go through your closet and get rid of stuff. You have so much crap. Yes, and, and like, shoes make a, take a lot of space. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh, I can't get rid of shoes. Yeah. how could you ever get rid of shoes? <laughs> one of the worst things that ever happened to me was after I got pregnant, my shoes, my oh, your shoe size got bigger, changed. and I was like trying to squash them into like the yeah. Chanel flats, and it was. I was like, no. <laughs> what do you do then? Chinese foot binding. That's the only option. <laughs> that is it. Buy half a size bigger, always. <laughs> oh, is that really the trick, with, especially with high heels? I, I think especially with high heels, and when you walk that much, mm -hmm. I'm always on my feet. When Fashion Week, I always buy a little bit bigger. It just helps. And we have time for one more question before we turn over to the audience. Is there such a thing as a comfortable high heel? A comfortable high yeah. heel? Yes. There Jean is. Jean Vitor Rossi makes really? comfortable high heels. I think so. Um, you know what? Here's the trick. Buy half a size bigger, and if there's a hidden platform, that makes it a lot easier because it's the steepness that's going to kill you. So if there's a little platform, mm -hmm. that's the sneaker of high heels. Oh, good God. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have time for some audience questions. So hit us, or hit Nina, rather.
What do you look for in a rising designer? And what would you say is a quality that is paramount to the success of a designer? Um, well, first and foremost, creativity is what I look uh, for. Um, and like we spoke to, bef uh, what we spoke about before, um, creativity and a sense of their own aesthetic, that so they have a point of view. That's very important. First, get involved in Project Runway. Um, well, I got involved in Project Runway. It's going to be about, I don't know, I don't want to count, but like 13 years ago. Um, I was an editor. I was a fashion director at a magazine, and um, producers came and asked us about, do you want to be in a show about fashion? And I was like, mm, I don't think people are interested. Why, why, why would they be interested? Um, no, seriously, at first I was very hesitant, but, um, but then um, slowly but surely I knew that Heidi was involved and Michael was involved and I became interested and, and I did it. And it was, it's been a success for 14 seasons. Hi, Nina. Um, as someone with a career as a creative, what is your secret to staying on trend or ahead of the curve? Um, oh, well, I think that you have to like uh, the arts. I think that's very important. So to be really current with what's happening, with what exhibitions are happening, what is happening in the art world, what is happening in the music world, what's happening in pop culture, I think all of that helps because all of the creative people are really taking all their inspiration from those mediums. So it's very important for you, you know, if you, ha if you like, if you like the arts, if you like music, if you like pop culture, you're already um, a little bit, you're, you're already ga gaining the same inspiration. Hi, Nina. Um, oh. Why do you think... Where's oh, this here. voice coming from? A little short. Wow. <laughs> you have a very deep voice. Um, why do you think Project One Way has remained... Um, so popular and relevant um, after 13 seasons? That's a good question. I think that the, you know, I think Project Runway is a program where you see the process of creation. And I think that process is very, um, it's kind of uh, amazing when you see somebody take uh, a piece of clothes and turn it into an evening gown. Or in, in Project Runway's case, sometimes it's a, supermarket full of produce and you turn it into a beautiful gown. So it's that process of creation and creativity that I think is very um, exciting for the viewers. I also think that fashion being a, being about the new and it's always about the new. So every season there's 16 new designers with 16 different, completely different points of view and you see how they evolve. I think that's, I think the viewer at home really appreciates that and watching that process unfold before your eyes. Hi, Nina. I'm a big fan. Um, Thank you. And I just have a question about kind of the fashion industry in general. Marie Claire is one of the few fashion magazines that does cover plus size fashion. And now Project Runway has Ashley. I know. Plus size Isn't she wonderful? She's great. She's wonderful. So, my question is how is the fashion industry closing the gap between plus size clothing and non plus size, I guess, the fashion market? I, I think it's a wonderful time because we are suddenly, you know, people are realizing that there are full figured women that actually buy clothes, need clothes, and need to have, right, and have, need to have a voice and need to be addressed. And sometimes, you know, in the fashion industry, it's, it's a little bit a lot, you know, we, it's about an image, it's about an aspiration, but we have to also address the real woman and that full-figured woman that, that also wants to look amazing. So it's a real... It's, and it's a wonderful moment because I think it's finally coming to light and people are uh, engaging in that conversation and, and featuring women that are full-bodied full and, and speaking about it. I wonder 
how you saw technology and the trend towards customization affecting uh, fashion trends and how they're being used as clothes? I think the industry has really, all industries have really been um, changed by technology and, and the effect on the fashion industry has been incredible. I think it's a positive. I think it's wonderful that we're living in this age where there are so many opportunities and, and really technology is offering such incredible platforms. Um, the way that we consume fashion is very different now. Obviously, we have immediate access to everything. When I started 20 years ago in this business, it was so different. I mean, we had to go to Paris and we had little slides and we came back with this film and it was so... Now it's free access. Everybody can, you know, and, and what's wonderful about it is that there's so much more interest in the business of fashion and so much more interest in, in fashion. It's just incremented everything. It's highlighted everything because there's more information available. Hi, Nina. Um, right here? No. Hi. From the books you wrote, which one you liked writing um, the most and why? Um, oh, yes. That's Well, from the books I wrote, I think the 100 was my favorite to write because, again, it was about editing it down to 100 pieces. So it was really... Yes, they all have, um, I all, always put my editor's thinking cap when writing a book, but this one really had that element of, I've got to narrow it down to 100 items um, that will remain timeless. And so that was a lot of fun to put, on, to put that list together. Last question. Hi, Nina. Um, to be honest, I don't know very much about accessorizing, as you see on except my wedding ring. Do you have any tips about how to like make an outfit pop? Just some basic tips? Yeah, accessories actually are <laughs> a big, are, they're, the, they're, they're very important. I'll tell you why. Because um, they're the first thing that gets delivered, into the first item that gets delivered into the stores. Meaning that they set the trend, right? They're the first thing that gets delivered, but it's also the thing that can change, can turn your outfit. So you don't really have to buy into, you don't have to buy any clothes. You can really splurge on just the accessories with the right shoe, the right bag, um, the right jewelry. You can really get into the trend of the season without really spending a lot of money. So I find that they are incredibly, um, when you go into an accessory floor and you see the accessories, you will learn what the trends are very quickly. Um, and you can update your, your look very effectively just with using the accessories. So I'm a big proponent of accessories. <laughs> and we have one time for one more question. Uh, hi, Nina. Is there any artist from previous season that has surprised you from their success from the show Project Runway that did not win? Sure, there's many. Um, there's one particular designer that was in the first, I think she was in the first or second season. Her name is Alexandra Vidal. And she really, she did not win. Um, but she has a beautiful evening wear business at Bergdorf Goodman and she sells really gorgeous couture-like pieces. Um, and her business is doing very well and she's very, very talented and has exquisite taste. Well, thank you guys so much, and I will now go shopping. And thank you. <laughs> thank you, Nina.